Today, we're talking about portability in our C programs and why printing standard ints is harder than it really should be. Welcome back, everybody. You know I love C, but today I want to talk about one of C's quirks that I find really annoying. And it's something super simple. It's basically just when we're trying to print out numbers which is something you did probably in your first hour of C programming. And it's not complicated, but if I want to write code that's going to work the same across any machine, it is, in my opinion, way more complicated than it needs to be or than it ought to be. This video is going to contain source code. And as always, you can get access to the source code from this video and all my other videos through Patreon. That's also where you can get access to my monthly office hour and where you can watch this video without ads. And if you're one of the many people who have helped support this channel, thank you so much for your support support, you make this channel work. And I really appreciate it. And now let's jump into the code. So today, let's start with something very, very simple. Basically, this empty program here. In fact, this whole program should be super simple. It's just some parts of it are going to be a little bit less simple. But so we're going to start here with an empty main function. You can see I've included standard io.h and standard int.h. That's where we're going to get our standard integers because those are what I'm going to try to print today. Also, I have a simple make file over here, really nothing fancy. Check out my make videos if you are new to make. But so back in our example program, what I want to do here is something really simple. We're just going to make some numbers, maybe do a little arithmetic and print some stuff out. So let's make some values. Let's call them X, Y, and Z maybe. Uh, let's make, let's make X a uint64 underscore T and set it to some arbitrary value. I don't really care what it is, but let's make it big because I mean, hey, it's a uint64 underscore T. So maybe something like this. And then let's say like we have Y and we have Z and let's change these up a little bit. You are gonna be 42 and maybe you are going to be I don't know, something like that. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. And just to mix things up a little bit, let's make this one a 16. So we'll make this one a 16 bit int. Now, if you are new to these uint64, uint16 underscore t's, these types are available so that we know for a fact how big our integers are going to be because the size of an int can vary depending on what platform, what operating system, what processor we are working on. So all this is saying is we have an unsigned integer that is 16 bytes long or an unsigned integer that is 64 bytes long or 64 bits, sorry, not, not bytes, bits. 64 bytes would indeed be huge. And I, I did a previous video about these types and this header file, standard in.h. I'll put a link down in the description in case you missed it. But these are really useful if you want code to be portable, something where you can just basically send it from one processor to the other and it should still work, should still do the exact same thing. These are really handy. So just for good measure, let's add one more. Uh, maybe I'll say UN64T, we'll call it result result and set it equal maybe to x times y and we'll add z. I don't know, just do something here. Make you feel like this is a real program instead of just a toy example. And now the whole point of the video is let's say that I want to print this out. So let's say that I want to uh, print out to the terminal something like, uh, let's just say we want uh, to print out, you know, we'll print out the result and then we'll print out uh, maybe how we got that result. So we'll say percent LU, I'm adding a percent LU for each of these. Um, but this one is 16 bits. So this is actually going to be an HU. And then we're going to add another percent LU because that's 64. And let's add our new line. Okay, so then this is just going to be a result X, Y, and Z. So each of these format specifiers, hopefully you've seen these, but this is just saying I want long unsigned. H just says I want half an int. So this, this is how you probably typically have done this in the past. And if we come down here, we can compile it and great, it works. Well, it compiles. And then if we run it, we can see sure enough. Okay, so it looks like it's fine. Or is it? Now, the problem here is that, okay, so this is fine here. But let's this is I'm, I'm in a Linux virtual machine here, you can see here. But let's say that instead, I switch back over to my Mac terminal. And let's clean it out. And let's try to compile it. And you notice that it gives me a whole bunch of these warnings. Because on this platform, a uint64 underscore t is a long, long rather than a long. And of course, I can just ignore these warnings, you know, because it did compile and the code might work okay. Like if I come in here and just say example, like it might still give me the same result, but it is never a good idea to ignore warnings in your build system because it can put you in a state of mind where you're used to ignoring 
the output of your build system and you may miss significant problems or there may be corner cases where this actually generated code that was just incorrect, even though it usually works the way we expect. And of course, if I'm compiling for my Mac, I can come in here and I can change all these LUs to LLUs. I think the HU is gonna be fine, but I can do this and then you can see, okay, now we are fine. But I really don't like that because that's basically saying it's not portable. It's saying if I'm on one machine, I've gotta change my code to make it work on the other. So let's go back. So what I really want at this point is to have one piece of code that will compile for both platforms without any warnings and that's going to generate the right code. Now what would be really nice is if we had format specifiers for printf that correspond to all of these standard ints, you know, an int32 underscore t or a uint64 underscore t or a int8 underscore t, whatever. It'd be nice if we had format specifiers for each of these that would just actually make perfect sense, but we don't. Well, I mean, we do sort of, but it's clunky and I don't love it. So let me show you how it works and then and you can decide if you hate it as much as I do. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna have to come up here and add a he header file um, int types.h. This basically has a bunch of macros that are defined to help us with this, specifically to help us with printf and scanf. I'm gonna focus on printf in this video, but scanf is basically gonna be the same way. And these macros have a particular naming pattern. For example, if I wanna print out a 32-bit unsigned int, the macro is pri little u 32. The pri is for printf, u means unsigned, and 32 means it is, well, that's the number of bits. So if I wanted a signed int, I would just change the u to a D. And so let's look at how this works in our codes. And what these macros are actually doing is basically picking the printf format specifier that fits the standard int type that we're using on the current platform. And then each of these macros are going to evaluate to a string. So that's a string in quotes, like a string literal. And that part makes this a little clunky. Basically, let me show you how we use them. We're gonna use them like this. Basically, instead of having a percent LU here, what I'm going to do is we're going to replace them with these macros. So um, I have to close out the string, so it's so like this, give myself some space here, because like I said, these are quoted strings. I can't just say something like P PRI U64 like that. That's not gonna work because it's a quoted string. So we got a quoted string within a quoted string and that's not gonna work. So we have to put them outside of the quotes like this. And we're gonna go through and we're basically going to do this for all of them. So we, like that. Do the same thing here, but this one is going to be uh, 16 instead of 64. And then one more 64 here. So what this is doing is it's taking a bunch of these strings and concatenating them all together uh, as the C preprocessor does. But right here, this is the thing that I find most annoying about this, just is that, yeah, this code right here is going to be more portable, but we get a format string that is really so much harder to understand at a glance. Someone looks at this and they're like, wait, what are you doing? You've got a string here and a string here, and they're all like concatenated together and you've got these macros in between. And I mean, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen written in C, but it's definitely not the best. But first, before I get too carried away in how annoying this looks, let's make sure it actually works. So I can compile here. And so that had no warnings. And if I come back here, we also, it compiles and we have no warnings. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Yeah, so, so this gives us portable code that's gonna run both in my Linux virtual machine and on my, on my Mac without any compile warnings. I just, I can compile it the same on both of them and it's gonna give me the same results. Now at this point, this might still be confusing to some of you. So let's take a look at what these macros are actually doing. So let's just take this compile command right here. This is the command we are using to compile these. And so if I come in here and instead of compiling to a binary like this, let's just add dash E. So what this is going to do is it's basically going to give me the pre-processed C code. So basically after all the macros are evaluated. So if I do this and I run it through, you can see what's going on. So on Linux here, you can see that basically what it's evaluating to is a still pretty ugly percent LU like we had before. And if if I take this same string, same compile command and switch over on Mac OS and I run it, you can see it is now giving me an LLU, right? So basically all it's doing is it's just inserting the format specifier. That makes sense on the platform that I'm running on. And so that is going to work, but it is a bit ugly. I really would much rather have printf support, standard integer types. I mean, when your standard library doesn't natively support your standard types, it starts to feel like you haven't bought into your own standard just a bit. And maybe in a future video, we could look at how to add our own format specifiers to printf. If any of you out there have a better solution for 
sure how to do this portably, please do let me know down in the comments. I would love to see what you're doing. But for now, we've got code that is functional and portable, a bit ugly, but I hope this helps you on a future project. I also hope it helps you understand a challenge that we have in C, because C really wasn't designed for portability, even though it's really important. And until next time, I'll see you later.